Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Wednesday, November 30th, 2016. And this is a response video to Redemption Draws Near and his video, Pink Planet Clearly Visible with Cloud in Front of It. Now, this video is apparently a direct challenge to me, as you can see from the description area. Dazza the Cameraman, I challenge you to be able to continue in your denial after viewing these slides and call this a lens flare. Okay, so challenge accepted, and let's take a look at the video. I'll just play the first few seconds here. Can lens flares cloak in 3D behind clouds? I didn't think so. And we see this shot from the all sky cameras, which says we've got a pink spherical object wearing a cloud. So, the shot here, now actually having done that, I'll just step ahead to later in the video because we've got a wider shot that shows the actual date and time. Here we can just see up the top here it says November 24th, 2016 and it's at 1.17.53 and we can see an object here. Okay, so let's go back to the image that we were focusing on here. This object which he says is cloaked with the cloud. Now I've been using this sequence downloader to download the latest images from several of the All Sky cameras. Uh, it gives me the advantage that I can have a complete sequence of images, not just the few that are displayed on the All Sky camera website. And so we're going to look at some of those images, including this image here, which although is not on the same date, uh, this one is on the 28th of November 2016. Um, you can see as I flick backwards and forwards between them that the apparent object is in much the same place and also the sun is in much the same place. And we can see this vertical line which is caused by the bright sunlight overloading the image sensor in the camera and spilling over into the uh, neighbouring columns of pixels and so we get this vertical line. You always notice that these lines are either completely vertical or completely horizontal depending on the orientation of the image sensor in the camera. So let's go back to this image here. As I say, this one's on the 28th of November 2016 and again we've got this vertical line. And you can see that that, that vertical line actually extends right up and down um, it's not just in the sky, it's also within the camera housing, so we can see that it is due to the optics um, and overloading of the image sensor. So what happens to this pink object, which apparently is supposed to be pink planet clearly visible with cloud in front of it? Let's see what happens when we step this image backwards and forwards. So I'm going to go backwards and the other thing that you notice is that when the sun is blocked by the cloud and we don't see that vertical line, which is caused by the bright sunlight overloading the sensor, whenever the, the sunlight is blocked by the cloud, then the object disappears, as we see in this image here. So let me step back again and keep going. And what do we find? That the pink planet is now in the trees. Now, unfortunately, um, I can't go back far enough on this because when I started up the recorder, it was already partway into the 28th, and this image here is actually on the 16th of November. Okay, so that's a different date. So this is the first image on the 28th of November, as you can see up in the top left-hand corner of the image, and the pink planet is in the trees. So obviously it can't be a real pink planet, it's obviously a lens flare. So I'm going to step this forward again now so that we can review this again and remember to watch what happens with the sun. When the sun is exposed, we get this vertical line which extends right down to the bottom and the top. So I'm going to step this forward again, going forward in time, and there is the pink object in the tree. And... As soon as the sun is blocked out by the cloud here, sufficiently blocked out that we don't get the vertical line, our pink planet mysteriously disappears from view. So let's step forward again, and there's our pink planet back in view again, 
with the vertical line. So I think it is obvious that this is indeed a lens flare caused by the bright sun. Um, it is not a pink planet and uh, it disappears from view whenever the clouds obscure the sun. Now just before I go let's review a few of my archived images from the same webcam. Uh, so let's step forward. We've got some cloud at the moment and here is the sun emerged. You've got that vertical line and what do we see? We've got a lens flare out within the inside of the camera. But let's step forward because there's another surprise coming up. Apparently this object caught the interest of this little bird that came along to check it out. And on November 13th, 2016, we've got the following image. We've got a cloudy sky and then in the very next image we've got this mysterious thing. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that is. Uh, maybe one of the viewers can work it out. Tell me what you think this is. And in the next image it's gone. So I hope that has cleared that up for you. Redemption draws near. I hope that I've met your challenge sufficiently for you. And uh, maybe you would like to download the same uh, downloader that I'm using so that you can properly review the images instead of just a few images at a time that you're restricted to. Now, I did leave some comments under this video in response to Redemption Draws Near, who tagged me in the comments here. As you can see the comments, you can pause the video and read them for yourself if you like. And uh, you'll see that in one of my comments, I also said in response to Redemption Draws Near, made a comment, said that he's all for mutual respect. I said, I'm all for mutual respect too, and I would welcome talking to you directly via Skype where I can share my screen with you and we can look at these images together and discuss them directly. No need to use a webcam, just a microphone. So that invitation is extended to Redemption Draws Near. Let's get together on Skype. I can share my screen with you. We can discuss these images together and see if we can come to a conclusion. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.